The Battle of the Bulge, also known as the Ardennes Offensive, was a major German offensive campaign on the Western Front during World War II which took place from December 16, 1944 to January 25, 1945. It was launched through the densely forested Ardennes region between Belgium and Luxembourg. The offensive was intended to stop Allied use of the Belgian port of Antwerp and to split the Allied lines, allowing the Germans to individually encircle and destroy the four Allied armies and force the Western Allies to negotiate a peace treaty in the Axis powers' favor. The 6th Panzer Army was to penetrate the American lines between Aachen and the Schnee Eiffel, in order to seize the bridges over the Meuse, on both sides of the city of Liège. The 6th Panzer Army designated the 1st SS Panzer Division Leibstandard as the Mobile Strike Force, under the command of General Wilhelm Monk. The division began as Adolf Hitler's personal bodyguard unit, responsible for guarding Hitler, his offices, and residences. Initially the size of a regiment, the unit eventually grew into an elite division-sized unit during World War II. In March 1944, the 1st SS Panzer Division was withdrawn from the Eastern Front and sent to be reformed in German-occupied Belgium. New and replacement soldiers were integrated to their ranks, most were adolescent boys, unlike the Nazi ideologue, fanatical soldiers from the 1930s. Gustav Nittel was a major in the 1st SS Panzer Division. He served with various units before becoming adjutant of a reserve battalion in August of 1939. Serving with the 1st SS Panzer Division, Nittel took part in the Battle of France. He was then posted as commander of the Heavy Company in the Reconnaissance Battalion. After taking part in several battles on the Eastern Front he was wounded and hospitalized in February of 1943 and was transferred to a field hospital. Divisional Commander Wilhelm Monk ordered Nittel to return to the division. Monk insisted that Nittel lead the reinforced reconnaissance battalion of the division in the Ardennes Offensive that would become the Fast Group Nittel. That same day, December 14, Nittel was briefed about the upcoming operation, the German attempt to break through the American lines and cut the Allied forces in two. Fast Group Nittel was to follow the tank-heavy battlegroups of the 1st SS Panzer Division, then use its speed to capture a bridge across the Meuse River south of Liège enabling the division to move toward Antwerp. After this meeting Nittel drove to the command post of his battalion to pass the orders and specifics on to his company commanders. The offensive started on the December 16, 1944. Initially Nittel advanced quickly, following in the wake of the division without enemy contact, through Hallschlag, Manderfeld, Holzheim, Hansfeld, Heppenbach, Amel, and Born. On December 17 a scouting party of Nittel murdered 11 African-American soldiers of the 333rd Artillery Battalion in Wurth. On December 18 Nittel's battalion moved to Stavelot. After leaving instructions for his company commanders he crossed the Amblev River Bridge in Stavelot at noon. Elements of his battlegroup followed during the afternoon and early evening but the American 30th Infantry Division recaptured the northern part of the town, blocking the advance route of the rest of Fast Group Nittel. The next day, December 19, Monk ordered Nittel and the elements of his Fast Group that did manage to reach La Glees back to Stavelot to recapture the town and open the advance route which was also essential in supplying other German battlegroups with fuel and ammunition. Nittel set up his command post in the Antoine farm west of Stavelot. The counterattack he deployed failed and that day members of his battalion murdered civilians in Trois-Ponts, Parfondrui, Renardment and Stavelot. That evening, the Americans demolished the bridge in Stavelot. Increased pressure from American forces stalled the advance of the division and continued attempts from Nittel to recapture Stavelot failed. The elements of Fast Group Nittel on the western bank of the Amblev River were trapped between Stavelot, Ku and Trois-Ponts. On December 20 U.S. Task Force Lovelady from 3rd Armored Division attacked Nittel's positions from the direction of Trois-Ponts but was halted by a King Tiger tank and some anti-tank guns. That evening elements from the 82nd Airborne Division moved in on the positions near Petit Spy and cut off the road to Juan. On December 21 elements of the 3rd Armored Division pushed Fast Group Nittel out of its positions in Stur. 
On December 22 a major attack from the 30th Infantry Division threw Niddle's men out of their positions at the western edge of Stavelot. It had become clear that the Meuse River could not be reached. In the early morning of December 25 Niddle cleared his positions on the western bank of the Amblev River and withdrew his men to Juan. The Ardennes offensive ended for Niddle when airplanes from the American 9th Tactical Air Force bombed his command post near Vilsam on December 31, 1944. He was hospitalized in Germany with serious concussion. In May 1945 Niddle returned to his family in New Ulm but soon decided to hide on a farm near Stuttgart. He returned to his hometown later that year but when he met with his wife on January 5th, 1946 he was captured by counter-intelligence corps agents. Niddle was detained by the CIC in Ulm and interrogated. Niddle later claimed that he was physically abused by his guards, which they denied. In March, Niddle was transferred to Schwabish Hall, where suspects of the Malmedy massacre were detained. Niddle and his fast group had not taken part in the Malmedy massacre since they had used a more southerly route. However, Niddle was questioned about war crimes in the Stavelot area. Niddle confessed that on December 21, 1944 he had ordered the murder of eight American prisoners of war at the command post of his heavy company near Petit Bay, east of Trois Following his self-incriminating confession, and despite fully expecting and accepting that he would shortly be executed, he was sentenced to life imprisonment on July 16, 1946 during the Malmedy Massacre trial. Niddle and his lawyers immediately filed a request with the War Crimes Board of Review to have his case reopened. He retracted his confession and, like other defendants, complained that the interrogations included psychological torture. In March 1948 the reviewing authority reduced his sentence to 15 years imprisonment. In May 1948 the War Crimes Review Board NRS4 rejected the claim that irregularities had occurred during the trial against Niddle but following the Simpson report and the findings of the United States Senate Committee on Armed Services his sentence was further reduced to 12 years imprisonment. Niddle was released from Landsberg Prison on December 7, 1953 following a Christmas amnesty. Niddle later worked as a car salesman for Opel in Ulm until health problems, including several cardiac arrests, forced him to retire in 1970. Niddle died on June 30, 1976 in Ulm Hospital. I hope you enjoyed this episode and to make sure you don't miss my future work, please make sure you are subscribed to my channel and press the bell notification button. Thank you and see you in the next video.